Welcome, fear enthusiasts and horror aficionados, to another chilling episode of the Scream Creeps podcast, where the shadows whisper and the unseen is king. I'm your guide on this terrifying journey, Jeremy, and I'm here with my brothers uh, Josh and Aaron, here to lead you deep into the caverns of the most petrifying tales ever told on screen. Tonight, we're gearing up for a spine-tingling descent into darkness with the 2005 horror masterpiece, The Descent. Scientifically ranked as ninth scariest movie by a 2020 study, this film plunges its audiences into the suffocating depths of uncharted caves and unleashes a nightmare that's as claustrophobic as it is monstrous. So tighten your harness and double check your ropes because today we're not just spelunking through any cavern, we're dropping into the abyss of primal fear, survival, and the eerie echoes of the unknown. Get ready to scream, to jump, and maybe, just maybe, to look at the dark a little differently after tonight. So I want you guys to stick around as we later dive into the behind-the-scenes secrets. I don't know how many of those we'll actually talk about. Discuss what makes The Descent a modern horror gem, and explore just what makes our heart, hearts race in the oppressive darkness. So lights off, headphones on, let's get creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as I said, uh, the movie's a 2005 film, but it's a British horror film, and it was written and directed by Neil Marshall. Um, the only one that I knew when I looked him up that I'm familiar with is the latest Hellboy movie, the one that was. Oh, the one with. Uh... The one with David Harbour playing as Hellboy. Yeah, yeah, but he directed Dog Soldiers, which I I don't know if I've ever heard of. Uh, the movie Doomsday, uh, a historical war film oh. called Centurion. Centur- I know of Centurion. Same with Doomsday. Doomsday was an okay movie. And then he direct- directed a movie in 2020 called The Reckoning, but... Uh, I'm not familiar with really any of them. Uh, not one was familiar. I, I think Doomsday is the only one that I might know. And it, it was like, it's kind of like Death Race in a way. Or, okay. um, like, kind of, not like the whole, it's like post-apocalyptic and stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's so, the only thing that I remember out of it. So film If it's took- the same one, sorry. That's all right. Filming took place in the United Kingdom. Uh, exterior scenes were filmed at Ashbridge Park, Hertfordshire, and in Scotland. Uh, because the filmmakers considered it too dangerous and time-consuming to shoot in an actual cave, interior scenes were filmed on sets built at Pinewood Studios near London, designed by an individual named Simon Bowles. Or Bowles, I'm not sure how you say it. But... The movie opened in cinemas in the United Kingdom on July 8th, 2005. It premiered at the 2006 Sundance Film Festival and was released on August 4th, 2006 in the United States. Oh, wow. It actually went to Sundance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was had a bigger budget than that. So, Yeah, the budget actually was only uh, 3.5 million pounds, it looks like. Uh, it made fifty to get into Sundance. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. But uh, I don't think it's really much. I don't think, at least, because I, I know that uh, I'm pretty sure Kevin Smith's films have all been at Sundance. All of them? I think so. You were like, there with the major. I know at least. Cha- I'm pretty sure that Chasing Amy was at least there. <clears throat> But yeah, on that three and a half million dollar budget, it made fifty seven point one million in the box office. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, it was regarded one of the as one of the best horror films of the two thousands. And I agree. <laughs> uh, I guess the, the, there was a sequel, to the Descent Part Two, that was released in two thousand nine that I don't even think I've seen. Um, well, I haven't seen it, but I heard that it delves more into the the uh, main chicks. Uh, part the uh, the uh, can't remember her name Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Okay, yeah, it, it goes with her again too. 
So, like, it, it, I don't think the whole story focuses on her, but, like, I know she's in it, at least. So wait, you I don't know if it's the same person, though. You haven't seen it? No, I just heard, uh, I think, I can't remember if I watched a video where they were talking about, like, the whole series as a whole, but I can't remember where I ended up seeing it at, where they talked about that she was in the second film. At the least. one that played Sarah was in the second one. Yeah. So she played the same character in it. Because you know how most of these horror movies are, like especially when they're lower-budget ones, like the sequels, I usually tend to, to not watch them just because most of the people that weren't in the first one ain't in the second one. But and the then one, I thought... Juno was also in the second one. So there were two characters oh. that made it to the... Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Okay. But I only um, heard about the main chick. It never shows whether or not she dies or not. So no. Uh-uh. But um, so as far as the casting, I didn't really. I guess they're probably mostly unknown because they really don't go into details on any of them. But Sean There's McDonald, only one that I recognized. Only uh, one. Yeah, Natalie Mendoza, Alex Reed, Saskia Mulder, My Anna Buring, Nora Jane Noon. Oliver Milburn and a Molly Kale, but uh, we were talking about Sarah and Juno, so that was Shauna McDonald and Natalie Mendoza that played those characters. Um, I don't know. Shauna McDonald is Scottish. She was in the Debt Collector. Um, that but, sounds familiar. My, my Anna Burning is the only one I recognize from the entire film. The okay. one that played Sam. Yeah. So, and do y'all know what she's from? No. She's from Twilight, right? No, no. There's a new new show on the, Netflix. The Witcher? Called, uh, huh? She was in The Witcher also. but Oh, she was oh, in The really? Witcher too. But there's another yeah. one on Netflix that she she's a part of. I okay. F- I forgot what it's called, though. Hold on. Uh... You're like, God, it's search it all. Yeah, it's not showing anything in in the uh, information. In our it. IMDb, but no, it yeah, was, just... uh, it's one about a whole bunch of, uh, uh, not witches, but it's that women are casting spells and stuff like that. Maybe it hmm. is The Witcher. Yeah, because she played. Well, Josiah I mean, it's probably The Witcher. Yeah, he's on The Witcher. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Oh okay. It was The Witcher. Yeah. See, I, I'm surprised at how I didn't recognize that, but I mean, yeah. like so, uh, some people you don't really really focus on all that much because I don't remember seeing any of these people in anything else. Well, she mostly was coming her. back to it and like re watching it. They're mostly British and Australian and other, you know, they're not, so they're not mainstream actors. That's why I was saying I didn't really point anybody out when talking about them. Oh, but even so, a lot of mainstream actors are actually English and you don't realize it until later on. Yeah, true. <laughs> so. Yeah, until they're off screen and they're talking in an interview or something. Yeah, but um, this had a lot of B movie elements to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just performed a lot better. Like it, it making fifty one million million compared to other B movies, but it it definitely had that feeling of a B movie. Yeah. So with that, I guess we'll go ahead and get started and talk about what we thought about the movie. Um, so we'll start with, I guess, you, Josh. I think we last one Aaron started. Well, but I don't really. Yeah, I don't know. Like, all I know is that I've seen this movie several times, and I think that's, um, like, one reason why I liked the movie was how I am claustrophobic myself, so seeing in the situation that they're in, like, going through a... Like, you find out that it's a whole unmapped uh, cave system that they that they went into, like, seeing that shit, I'd be like, nope, sorry, I'm not going to fucking do this shit. Well, at the point that they find it out. Yeah, they, they find it out, like, close. after they're already starting to get, like, deep into the cave system. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm like, I, I think I remember, I'm like, I think me and mom and dad watched this movie. I, I think I'm pretty sure that we watched it. That's why I was surprised that nobody else watched it because I think they rented it one time when it first came out on video or whatever. So yeah, I don't think I watched it because I remember a video game called The Descent. And then I see, liked the video game and I was like, eh. I well, I mean, there's some, like a lot of games called like, <laughs> like The Descent or whatever. It's like, uh, I know that there was a GameCube game, but it's, it has Descent in the name, but it's not like the whole, uh, name of the, I'm like, I can't think of the name. It's like Eternal Darkness something, Descent into Madness or something like that. I can't remember for sure. But like, yeah, I can't remember. All I know is that it's funny too in this one was that they made two endings to the movie. I'm like, as a side note, they, uh, yeah, they made two separate endings and then when they did the English version, it's different. <laughs> Just because they thought, like, everybody that screened the movie in in the States said that it was too depressing, so they changed, changed the ending to the movie. So, if anybody's well, watched... What the hell? What was the original? The original one is that she falls asleep, or, like, she, she's climbing... Does the whole thing where she's climbing, sees the sun hit outside, or like where she could see the sun. She goes through there, gets up top. Pretty much the whole ending is the same. The only difference is when she sees Juno, it wakes her up and then she's still in the cave. <laughs> and then it starts up like where she, and you could see that it's huge in the place, and then that's where it ends. So two totally different endings, and they were like, oh. Yeah, it's funny because this goes back to what I was saying about, I think we were talking about the movie The Breakup and how on another podcast, I don't remember which one it was, where I was saying, you know, the movie's called The Breakup, so it was nice to actually see that at the end they actually broke up. Yeah. But in most of most movies, they don't, they always make them happy endings, and I think this kind of points to what they, that they did that. And that, I guess when they screened it, the ending was trimmed by a minute, what what Josh is talking about. So originally it was going to end where she escaped from the cave and saw Juno, but did not cut back to the cave. And, yeah. And American viewers did not like that it was an uber hopeless finale. So they cut the, the final end off. Yeah. Of so yeah, the, like, if you get the DVD version of the movie, you could still see the the alternate ending, as you would say, I guess, on those yeah, DVDs. I guess the so you could still watch that. but Yeah, I guess the marketing chief at the time said, it's a visceral ride, and by the time you get to the ending, you're drained. So, and well, he said yeah. that guess... the director had a number of endings in mind when he shot the film, so he was open to making a switch. Um. And he the guy and Marshall, the director, compared the change <clears throat> to the ending of Chain, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, saying just because she gets away, does that make it a happy ending? So it's like you know, he was kind of pointing to to that in uh, making mm -hmm. that change. But but yeah, like Josh said, it's featured on as the unrated cut on the DVD. Um, let's see, did I talk about the filming? Yeah, just that they were shot in the United Kingdom and some were, uh, mm. exterior scenes yeah, were you, filmed you in Scotland. That, right? Yeah, and the set was like, it's kind of crazy how they made all the the sets too. Like, and they, and, it, and everything looked pretty realistic for being in a cave system, even though there was a, well, a set. Yeah. Simon but, Bell I mean, I would understand why they wouldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> he designed yeah. the, the maze of the cave. Probably not the aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So. There were 21 cave sets that were yeah. built by a guy named Rod Vass and his company Armored Dillo Limited. 
and they used a unique system of polyurethane sprayed rock. So, uh, let's see. Looked legit. Yeah. Well, and it was like, you and you kind of felt, I think that's one reason why like I like it so much is that you actually feel like you're with the people the whole time, how they filmed it and everything. You feel like, oh, shit, I would definitely not fucking be in this situation. <laughs> like, I can't believe that they would put themselves in this type of yeah. environment. I do, find, I do find it interesting that the crawlers were essentially cavemen that evolved to live yeah. in the dark. So they they were just, I guess, <laughs> um, what is it, Neanderthals? Is that what they would, I guess? Be yeah. Like? And, or uh, it's something kind of like it. Well, I mean, is that what cavemen evolved to, was Neanderthal, and then what we are now? Because it's basically like Neanderthals were the guys that kind of bent over when they walked and stuff, right? And we're kind of bigger in I terms saying, of... I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I just know, well, genetically, we've got a high disposition of Neanderthal compared yeah, to others. Yeah, they'd be others. like our distant cousin or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that's when I did the 20... Yeah, I, I yeah. felt like the creatures they were trying to make, like, it was vampire-esque, like cannibal yeah. humans that were... Well, it was another one where they couldn't see anything, so they had to almost go by hearing. Almost like what we're getting ready to talk about in a couple other podcasts again when we do uh, talk about A Quiet Place 2. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of movies we've been watching lately that um, they can't really see very well, so they uh, uh, base everything on what they're hearing. Um, yeah. So... Um, but yeah, it's the movie was crazy. I mean, I liked it just because it was something offset different than. What oh we yeah, because you said that this is, and you said that this was your first time watching it, right? First time I in think. a while. I think I had seen oh, it okay. a long time ago. But the problem is, is when you know this movie is eighteen years old or seventeen years old. So yeah. The last time I saw it may have been seventeen years ago. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Did that. I remember it all that much? No. So when I saw it this time, it was almost like watching it for the first time. Um, but I guess the only part I didn't understand in the movie was why the whole Juno Beth thing. I, 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 I don't know if I quite understood why she stabbed her. Oh, it was. Oh, you're talking about like where she hit her with the axe? Purpose. Huh? Yeah, are you talking about when she... Yeah. It came off that way. Maybe I missed a part where... No, it she, oh, like no. She, and she, she expected the crawlers to be there, yeah. So she, she just went and... doing all these things, and then all of a sudden she hears somebody behind her, so she, all, she just whipped around with the axe, and it went through Beth. The thing I okay. didn't understand is why did they make it out like Beth... Or like like Juno was this horrible person. Well, that's like, why I think I took it Juno that way just later. Explain was... that to Sarah. Like I killed Beth because I thought she was one of them. Well, like, and that's where I yeah because the storyline kind of pushed that narrative somewhat. That, that Juno because was even bad. later, Beth told Sarah, I believe that that Juno killed you know stabbed her or was the one that yeah. hurt her. So it's like they, they, and, they and then kept, even said uh, that she was cheating with her husband too. Yeah. So they kept up a weird nar narrative when it came to Juno, and I, that's where I was. That's where I was kind of a little well, confused I mean, they on why they did that. Sarah far enough to where she would do what she later did. To yeah. Juno yeah. In the story, right? I think they could have come up with a better way of doing it, mm -hmm. because I mean, you're supposed to. Let's think of all the timing. There's a lot of things that happened from Juno hitting her in the neck with that, that pickaxe to when Sarah sees her with a bunch of bodies still alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She would have bled out 
after 15 minutes, not even that. Mm -hmm. Like in the neck? Yeah, no, she would have been dead. Mm -hmm. So there was a, I mean, there were holes there. But mm -hmm. the fact that Beth, as she's dying, tells Sarah about Beth, like Juno, cheat or Sarah's husband cheating on Sarah with Juno. Yeah. That's what you prioritize? Like, oh, she hit me with this. She left me. Also, she was with your husband. You chose that of all times to tell your best friend? Yeah. Yeah. Joke. You tell them, like, when shit ended up hitting the fan. That's what yeah. it was serious. Yeah, I think Before that's realistic. These things here, let me tell you an awful thing yeah. that happened. Because I could yeah. tell you because he died in a car accident. And your daughter died in that in a car accident. It's like, the fuck? which was one of the craziest parts in the movie. Yeah, they, I yeah. don't think I expected was... that right away. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. It's and the gruesomeness by crazy. what they showed, where it went yeah, through a death. yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, one, okay, one I was... thing that you definitely get from that is that that was an immediate response for the. Uh, for the audience to kind of be empathetic toward the main character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happens to her and they're like, traumatic event, and then all the friends are trying to help her and stuff like that. And then you're automatically connected to her because you went through this traumatizing thing with her in that moment. Yeah, and then it's been a year. Let's go explore the caves. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, what's going to help me explore some caves? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> weren't they thrill like, seekers, oh, though? I mean, they kind of alluded I to the I understand that, that they, they were did, thrill so seekers, kind of like... but I, I well, mean, they... I'm just saying, like... Well, I mean, they didn't know that it was going to be a cave that was... Unexplored. unexplored she and like that i think they were just showing that juno kind of made a bunch of wrong decisions like she did not uh, with her boyfriend or husband or whatever and then stabbed beth and then just ditched her too but i mean also at the same time like in your certain circumstance like anybody in that situation they uh, they would have probably done the same thing if you're trying to like save your neck like a lot of people would try to do that anyway, either that or you would end up dead too, huh? What, what would they do? Like, I mean, uh, like a lot of people in that circumstance probably, like, uh, especially if a bunch of things are coming at you, you don't know that it's somebody friendly behind you. They ain't saying nothing, and you just like hit oh, uh, them you're, you're and then on top of it if you're if you already know that you stabbed her what else are you supposed to do you would end up in, uh running anyway now the only difference is is some people would finish the job beforehand to that way she didn't uh like suffer more or whatever probably but like i don't know like in juno's circumstance it's kind of like it seemed like they did the cheating thing as an extra thing to be like, yeah, she's a real bad person or whatever. And so I'm like saying like, you need to get one over on her, like convincing more of it because she made a lot of the bad decisions the whole time. Didn't tell anybody that it was an unmapped section. She did all that shit. And then on top of it, then it was like she would sacrifice other people to get out, you know? <clears throat> or at least that's where where they made it look like Juno would do, but I mean, yeah, I mean they painted her in this picture, but I don't know. But yeah, as far as everything was else, it was high, you know somewhat realistic about how it would, for the most part, it was realistic on how a reaction if that actually happened. I mean, if you came across people like that and how you would react, even that reaction, her killing her on accident I, like i said it wasn't the fact that they she killed her on accident it was how they portrayed it throughout the film it made, they made it seem like it wasn't one and like it wasn't an accident yeah well yeah and that's why i did yeah. what i didn't understand of about the it yeah. that got stabbed and yeah and sarah because they're the only two that knew about it other than juno but you knew mm -hmm. the truth that it was an accident 
Like when it yeah. first happened, I was like, oh shit. But you knew that she didn't mean to hurt her friend. Well, I mean, that's where I was saying the, the they didn't make it out that way because it's not like when she stabbed her, she reacted like, oh, shit. She actually just cruised. Like, she... Yeah, yeah. So that's why I was saying there was no, like, if I hit somebody, I'd look at him and go, oh, fuck. Or... That, you know, oh, I'm sorry, was, that yeah. the look she had on her face. I didn't, yeah. I didn't recall she, yeah. seeing her that Her mouth look. and tears immediately started, like, yeah. so maybe her I eyes started just, welling up um, and she started crying. And maybe I'm just not remembering that part when I watched it. <laughs> I watched it, what, two weeks ago? I think yeah. you may have seen it more recently than me. Uh, but for some and reason, then, I'm the, not remembering that. When that happened, that. she, like... She, she, it was almost as if she couldn't, uh, she couldn't process what she did, so she ran. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I yeah. just missed that whole. And I figured that she didn't say that because, like, she could have probably said something when she left. She felt. But like if it, if anything, she would have probably blamed it on the people, and she would have dealt with the um, like her doing it. Like she probably wouldn't have told anybody that it was her that did it. I mean, I would assume that, but she should have told. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, she wouldn't have been in the same position with Sarah and shit if she would have said something. She lie about it, yeah, yeah. But you knew she would lie about it because she had been lying to Sarah about sleeping with her husband the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, she was essentially a liar. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, she was a liar. So, with that, I guess we can talk about um, the rankings. So, as we said at the beginning, this was ranked uh, number nine on the top 35 scariest movies according to science back in 2020. But, uh, so to just to go through the study again, the average resting heart rate uh, for everybody in the study was 65 beats per minute. So, the average movie heart rate for... The descent was actually 79 beats per minute so it was actually tied with the visit and the ring for the average Mm. but the highest spike is the highest we've seen so far um so it's a it's tied with a quiet place actually at 122 beats per minute was the Mm. highest spike during the film so that's what put it at number nine in comparison to the other two that we recently talked about here on the on the podcast. I wonder so, what part that would have been at. I would bet it was almost the beginning. I mean when that oh, yeah, like when the, that the spike pipes went through, thing, yeah. The pipe oh, went yeah. through his head. That shock, yeah. It had to have made people because I know it did me. I was not expecting that to happen. I expected something to happen, like an accident or something, but I didn't expect the the incident yeah. to occur that yeah. all right so let, let me ask you guys did you know that juno was sleeping with her husband at the very beginning no but did like it i did oh what did you see the glances and shit if you see like if you yeah. look back after you watch it again it was like you could definitely tell well i like, got an was... inkling yeah i got an inkling with how the looks knew. were and yeah, and yeah, there's, and there's mostly foreshadowing and things when in most movies. I always talk about it with Elaine is that they'll show a certain thing for a reason, like they'll show an object. And so, in a lot of horror movies, they'll show an object, and you know that object's going to be used to kill somebody in a few minutes. There's no reason to show the object just out of the blue in a lot of these, and then. Sure enough, five minutes later, somebody used it, and so it's so if you pay attention close enough, you can pick up on a lot of things in in movies. But they kind of get you with the throwing twelve different things at you and hope you miss one. That way, you're surprised later on. And mm-hmm. um, there was a video I recently saw where there's people. Like the question, there's a bunch of people in the room and it says, 
count how many times the red ball gets passed or it's a i don't know if it's a red ball or if it's a different color ball but they they say count how many times it gets passed and then when you get to the end they're like they give you the answer but then they go did you notice the the freaking uh panda walking or the gorilla walking through the the shot while you and sure enough in the middle of it there's this freaking gorilla walking back and forth just through the whole group and you don't notice that because your mind is focus on the focus on how many times the ball was thrown around so you never notice the gorilla just (laughs) walking through the shot and so it's that kind of stuff that i'm referring to like with a horror movie they they place these things hoping that you kind of catch on to it catch on to Mm -hmm. it you may miss it so you're shocked later on when they reveal it um six cents kind of did that with the whole I see dead people. Mm-hmm. They they yep. revealed that early on, and nobody really picked up on it. It was such a big thing that at the end, when oh he's you know, I don't necessarily want to spoil it, but it's been out for thirty years. But you know, the fact that he was dead was he was already kind of alluding to that five seconds into the movie. But anyhow, um, but that's M Night Shyamalan for you. Most of his movies. Are kind of they revolve pretty much all movie. have a twist at the end, yeah. So, love his but, but yeah, did you guys have anything else to say about the descent? No, I don't know. If no, I'm... just check it out. Yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, yeah, it was it was a solid movie to be honest. She was, was Sarah. I do have to say this, Sarah. By the end of the movie, with the exception of her attempted murder. Of her friend, friend was an absolute badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she became the oh hell yeah, like I want this chick to just lay everybody out. That type of that type of chick. It was it was great. Her character got better once she was she went into full fuck it mode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it was awesome. I would say, all right, there was one scene in particular that this was the moment that things changed and I, I could sense it. Or not sense it, but I knew it was a change. When she came out of the blood. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's probably one of my yeah, favorite yeah. scenes in the movie. It's like her that falling into it and coming out. Everything yeah. changed. Mm-hmm. That's why I actually liked the the... It wasn't the whole, oh... It would it would be depressing if it was the other, the other version and stuff like that. No, I wanted that badass chick to achieve her goal. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, what I wanted because she was getting sick. So, with the exception of her killing a friend, of course, mm-hmm. like I didn't agree with that decision. Did not. She would have done a lot better. Yeah, I think they should have done uh, where they were together, got out, and then they uh, could have done something where, hey, she's going to jail or something. You know, like done something after they got out. She didn't, like, because she accidentally killed her friend. Like, come on. Well, that's what I'm saying is, like, deal with the consequences after you both escape. Instead of you doing it, that the like because punishment. the worst punishment that you could possibly give a person like that is letting them live the rest of their life with the guilt. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. So help that chick get out, and then be like, "Bye, bish." You know, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like we said, The Descent 2 had both of them in it, so I don't know the premise behind it. So she obviously either got out or they it's a prequel. of, something. Or it's like the, a ghost version and or yeah. something of Juno. Ghost for, oh, she's or, you know, because at the end of this movie, they showed, like, her, like, you could tell, like, PTSD or something hit in where she was seeing D- Juno's body mm-hmm. type thing. Because if in the descent to Juno survived that whole ordeal, she's even more badass than Sarah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. 
Because in that, even her whole scene with, with uh, when she was going ham with her pickaxe and then accidentally killed her friend, like she was, she was getting it. She was, yeah. I loved those scenes. That was my favorite part about the movie, was them actually fighting these things. <laughs> oh yeah, that's why. That's a, why the movie was great to me. Like they they chose a an antagonist that wasn't superhuman that they could actually fight back against, but it was still terrifying because they did have that special sense ability. They were so, like in their environment, they were much more powerful. Yeah. So so, so um what you just said, Aaron. Uh yeah. May have to watch the second one <laughs> because uh, are they more powerful? No, but Juno's found to be alive in the cave still. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, Juno's a badass. Yeah. So, uh, but they follow the events of the first film. So two days after it. Um, oh damn! Yeah. So two days. Okay. Yeah, and they go looking for the missing friends. So, how in the hell would they have known that they were there? But no, it's yeah, I'm sure that they'll explain it. Yeah, it's because Sarah escaped. She's taken to a hospital. Oh, okay. So okay. And, so with with the original ending, they never would have been able to make a second film. Yeah, I think that sounds like sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds like so. more of the reason why they <laughs> yeah. made the second ending than yeah. it does. Oh, yeah. The English movie go or the the U.S. moviegoers, oh, they don't like sad stories. Huh. Yeah, I think that's some bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like you wanted to make a buck, so you changed the ending so that yeah. you can make a second one. Yeah, exactly. Right. The funny yeah, thing is, the second one didn't do game. shit though. What? The second one didn't do anything. It oh, made seven it million in the box office. How much Damn. did they spend on it? I didn't even know it that they released even, it. It doesn't even say. It just says box office was $7 million. Let me see if it... Yeah, it doesn't even point out how much they spent. Probably not <laughs> as much. I would think not as much. Yeah, that's, but... that's probably what it was. It was probably more than $7 million. <laughs> But yeah, it didn't make Jack. I mean, how they would spend more, I have no idea because all the sets yeah. made, all of this. Like, what did they demolish all the sets? Did they do? I mean, you would think so, you would think that they would end up still having it, so they could repurpose everything. But you know, <sighs> that's probably partly why the second one didn't do too well, though, because it seemed like they almost did a rehashing of the first one with some new parts sprinkled in. Yeah. It. So it was probably yeah. Like if you've seen it, why do you need to see it again kind of thing? Mm -hmm. But but anyways, um, with that, I don't know. I think we're, we've are uh, we talked about The Descent uh, enough. Um, with that being said, the, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. about this movie. Enough. Just talked about it. <laughs> well, I mean, we, you know, we we talked about the the study and whether. Well, I guess we didn't talk about whether or not it was. I didn't feel it was heart raising, or you know, even if I did see it seventeen years ago, I would barely even consider it. this a horror flick, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, it's more like an action flick than, and like the only thing that's like horror related is knowing that. It's like they're in the darkness the whole time, so you didn't see like them and the claustrophobic nature of being in the cave system. I think really that's the scary part for certain people. Yeah. It's just knowing that your enemy could just be like coming out of nowhere. I don't know how they could have survived in that environment though, but because I don't see many people just going into that cave and be like, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> well, I'm kind of thrown when people decide to do what is it, the freehand cliff diving? What is it called? Where they're or freehand cle oh, cliff yeah. climbing, where they don't have any ropes and they're climbing with just their hands and their feet, and they're yeah. hanging off of it with just a. a I like, thought it was called like free hanging or something like that. Some, I thought it was I, something like those that. Those people are nuts. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, 
I don't know how. I mean, I think at one point Tom Cruise was doing like, shit like fuck that. Fuck that. There ain't no way in hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, hell no. I mean, so um, everybody knows how risk averse I am. There ain't no way in hell I'd get even close to that. But, but for um, the next ev- episode, we'll be talking about the Babadook. So next week, that'll be number eight on the series. We're getting close to the end. Um, Super close. Yeah. Yeah. So, so number eight's the Babadook, which is a it's an Australian film. So it was made back in 2014, but we'll be talking about that next week. Uh, but I hope you guys, for everybody that made it to the 40 minute mark of this podcast, um, uh, if you guys haven't liked and subscribed to our channel yet, or so uh, subscribe to any of the podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, we would love to have you guys and. Hit that bell on YouTube so you get notified when these videos come out. We've not only got the podcast videos, but I've got various playthroughs I'm doing on the channel now. Aaron's doing random. I think he's starting to do random reacts again. Uh, here's yeah, I got to I gotta do a couple of mu- music reviews for uh, Avrilize is uh, ran- uh, this new band that I've just seen from Germany come out of the record. And then uh, Alpha Wolf's record just hit. <laughs> and yes. it, it is killer so i gotta do those videos soon yeah, so josh will be doing music <clears> reviews, <throat> and then we've got let's plays and a bunch of other stuff coming so for all of us here at the heart of geek i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next uh scream creeps episode have a good one and we'll see you in the next time